Hello, friends of Sweet Vegan. I'm happy to see you. Well, I can't see you, but I'm happy that we're together. I'm grateful to you for being here today. And uh, it is an incredibly beautiful day outside in Montreal. I just finished writing this month's newsletter that is going out in a few minutes. And I, I may have implied that it didn't feel very spring-like here in Montreal yet. Hey, we are late because I know last year we had big lilies like not the actual flowers but the plants in the back were fully fully full and uh right now they're only a few inches tall so we are behind i have that feeling inside me where i'm excited and i'm anxious to get out and plant stuff and i know that i can't because it's going to be like at least a month before i can do that without you know the threat of frost or actual snowstorms <laughs> because this is Montreal and that happens um but uh yeah today it's really beautiful and I'm looking forward to going outside and taking a walk with the dogs after this recording with you so pretty cool day I get to record this morning with you and then I'm heading out to take a walk in the beautiful sunshine with my two crazy dogs so uh, I'm also excited to be here because, did I say I was excited to be here? I am. I'm excited to be here because today we're talking about the sneaky places that non-vegan ingredients make their way into. Um, and I have been vegan since 2010 and we're 2022 right now, so 12 years. And I still just yesterday learned about a food that I've been eating, not often, but once in a blue mood, that um, um, that is not vegan friendly. And it's not obvious. And I'm going to tell you what that is in a little bit, because what? That's right. I've been vegan for 12 years. And I'm, I'm, I, I am sweet vegan. I'm Jennifer Jim, I'm sweet vegan. I have a vegan website, a vegan blog, a vegan podcast. You know, my Instagram is full of all kinds of vegan tips and recipes and stuff. And I just found out yesterday that something I have eaten in the last six months is not actually vegan friendly. So um, some people don't mind. Some people are, you know, mostly plant-based or live vegan lifestyles or eat predominantly vegan foods and don't mind those little sneaky spots that not vegan foods creep in. Some people are horrified and I would say I'm probably somewhere in the middle. So I don't want it and uh, I won't eat it if I know about it, but I'm not. Like, I I'll just say I'm not going to go through a long process of grieving today because I found out that I ate something that wasn't vegan friendly a few days ago or a week ago or whenever it was, it was recently. So uh, yeah, but when I first switched to a vegan diet, I really just thought, okay, well, this is gonna be really straightforward. I don't eat any animals or fish or birds and I don't eat anything that came out of their bodies, simple. So despite uh, some people's insistence that eating chicken or fish is still vegan. It's not. Um, so whether it's cows or chickens, turkeys, ducks, any birds, um, sheep, pigs, fish, shrimp, insects, and anything that comes out of them, their breast milk, their honey, their pollen, their eggs, all that stuff is not vegan um to for you know consumption but so it's a it's an extensive enough list but what makes it trickier is that some animal products either are not listed at all on on ingredients lists because either the percentage that like i think that there's I can't remember what it is, but there's a percentage uh, that you don't have to declare an ingredient. So if something falls beneath a certain amount, it's so minute that they don't actually have to list it as an ingredient on the products. And then also some of the stuff is not literally an ingredient. Some of the stuff is just used in the processing or clarification of that food or beverage. So it's also not listed in the ingredients, but they did use it to make it. So again, it depends on how strict you are, whether or not you care about that. But I'm just going to try and cover as much of it as I can so that everybody's covered. And um, and yeah, so as I said, uh, when I first 
switched to a vegan diet. I thought I had it pretty much covered. And then like some things would creep in at first that I'd be like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't think about this. Like, um, I think fats and oils would be uh, probably one of the first. There was two that came up right pretty much right away. And one of them was fats and oils for sure. So lard and butter and any kind of animal um, oils. So first, for example, if you eat at a restaurant and you have um, the hash browns or French fries, uh, places like McDonald's, for example, or any burgers, things like that, uh, it's helpful to ask if they are fried in the same oil as the meat is and then also what kind of oil is being used so don't assume that it's a vegetable oil any more than you would assume that it's not peanut oil you sh should also you know consider I think the McDonald's if it's if I'm not incorrect and they may not still do this but I believe they were frying their fries in beef fat maybe they still do I'm not sure I can't remember um and I would just google it for you but I'll probably get like 30 contradicting blog posts about it. And um, that was pretty lame of me to say. I probably could have done some digging for you and found out the truth, but I didn't. But you guys can, and then you can tell me what you discovered if you do it. So yes. Um, and then even things like pies and some pastries are, the dough is made with lard or butter instead of vegetable shortening or vegetable oil as well. Um, I guess that would be the second. So they were both about oil. <laughs> I said there was two. They're both about oil or animal fats, but one would be, I guess, in savory dishes and just like, what was it cooked in? And then the other that I think surprised me, but I don't know why, because I've made pie before and I know that you put butter in the, in the pie crust and stuff, but it just didn't occur to me. I think the first time I had pie that um, it might not be vegan. And someone asked me, oh, was this pie crust made with lard? And I thought, oh, geez, I don't know. And they said, well, maybe it was butter. And then I was like, what am I eating? I don't know. Um, so I finished my pie. But next time I went to that pie shop, I asked them. And it was, they were the using butter for the pie crust. So fortunately, butter is more expensive than vegetable shortening. So a lot of the pastries that you can buy in grocery stores are often made with vegetable shortening and not butter. So if you like those things, um, you're in luck, I guess. So, um, one of the sneakier places that you may find animal products or one of the products that it is less obvious that they are not vegan friendly sometimes would be vitamins and supplements and probiotics and prebiotics and medications. Um, so for example, vitamin D3 most of the time comes uh, in a form that um, comes from either fish oil or lanolin, and lanolin is the oil that is in sheep's uh, wool, I was going to say fur, and um, vitamin D3 is used to fortify all kinds of foods. A lot of the foods that's pre-packaged in the grocery store, you'll see that it's fortified with vitamin D3 including breakfast cereals. So pretty much anything that's made by Kellogg's or General Mills is probably not vegan friendly if it's fortified with vitamin D3. There are some vitamin D3 forms um, that are derived of, um, well, algae basically. And then also there's vitamin D2, which is um, plant-based. So it comes from a lichen plant uh, that lives in algae if I am not mistaken. So there's that. And then certain supplements like glucosamine and a lot of omega-3 supplements uh, come from fish oils. Um, there, you, you, you can find these things also in vegan form. Um, and I have a link actually, well, I'll put a link in the po post. I'll put a link, I'm getting there. I'll put a link in the show notes to a blog post. Uh, on my website that lists um, vegan sources of omega fatty acids, the actual whole food sources, but also some uh, of my favorite supplements because um, they do exist and you don't have to get 
your omegas from fish oil, you can get it from algae, algae oil. Um, there are actually at least 25, probably, no, there are more than 25 different ingredients in vitamins, supplements, and medications that are derived from animal um, and from insects. So I will also link to a blog post that literally lists the names of all of these ingredients in case you want to go through your medicine cabinet or your vitamin cabinet or shelf thing and just have a look to, to, to check for those things. So, um, and even B12, you B12 is, so I, things I would pay, pay really close attention to are, um, your, the omegas, your vitamin D and your B12. Those are very often, um, animal derived. And, um, of course, if it's collagen, it's probably comes from, uh, animals as well. Um, and, um, well, there's a bunch of them. Like I said, I will, I'll put a, a link in the show notes to a whole blog post about the vitamins, supplements, and medications that have ingredients in them that are not vegan friendly. Another ingredient. Okay. So what, when I was saying earlier too, that you, um, you might not see them in the list of ingredients because the percentage of that product or that ingredient or whatever it is, is so low that they didn't have to list it. But sometimes it actually is listed and you just don't recognize the name because it's not obvious. It doesn't say animal product or dairy product. It, 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 it will be a name that maybe you're not familiar with. So I, um, I'll go through a few of those. There's tons of them. Again, there's just so many of them. Um, I actually have a, a like a downloadable PDF also that I can, again, put the link to for people who are trying specifically to avoid dairy, who have dairy, um, well, either because you're vegan or plant-based or because you are lactose intolerant or have an allergy to dairy because uh, it's really important. So it will have a very extensive list. It won't have, it does have a very extensive, <laughs> extensive list of foods that contain dairy, but then also some names of some of the ingredients that, um, that, that are dairy, but we'll get to that in a sec because there's a, there's a few of them, but I'm actually going to start with, um, Oh, I can't remember how to pronounce it. L cysteine, I think in bread products. So that's an amino acid. Um, and it can be found in duck and chicken feathers and in cow horns, but the form that's actually in most foods that we consume that contain it, it, it comes from human hair. Mmm, delicious. So I don't know. You can decide if you think that's vegan or not. I just think even my own hair grosses me out. So I, I definitely don't want to eat somebody else's. Uh, it's used to prolong shelf life in products and is also um, used as a dough conditioner. So um, that's more likely to be in prepackaged, more like processed or prepackaged breads and, and baked goods. Check your labels carefully for um, this ingredient because uh, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's not obvious um, that it is not plant-based. The name is just kind of strange. So L-cysteine, if I'm saying it correctly. I hope I am. Carmine, carmine. Speaking of pronunciation, carmine is a red dye and it comes from the red uh from a well, a red little scaly insect um called a cochineal. <laughs> uh I really did verify the pronunciation of all these things before I pushed record, but Hey, um, okay. So it's a little scaly bug. It's like a beetle and, um, you will actually see the name of the insect listed sometimes. So it'll say cochineal extract or coach. Yeah. Cochineal, cochineal, cochineal. Yeah. Uh, extract. And it will also sometimes be labeled as E120 or as red number four. Um, so it's sometimes in alcoholic beverages used for, for color, any kind of red food. So soda, sodas, yeah, sodas, um, 
some juices or fruity drinks, um, but most often you're going to find it in things like candy, in flavored yogurts, um, in ice creams, and um, also in cosmetics. We'll do a whole episode about cosmetics, uh, vegan cosmetics or vegan personal products, toiletries, etc. But um, it is sometimes in eyeshadow and lipstick as well. So there's that. So it's just crushed up insects, little tiny red insects that I think are found on cactus paddles, actually. I think they eat cactuses, cacti. Okay, so um, another one is gelatin. So a lot of people have heard of gelatin and probably when they think of gelatin, they think of actual jello. And some of you are like, ew, that's disgusting if it's not the 50s and you're not laid up in a hospital bed recovering from a tonsillectomy. You have no business eating jello anyway. And some of you are like, I love jello. Jello is all kinds of fun, especially the jello with chunks of fruit in it or whatever. I don't know. I don't really eat jello. I remember liking jello though. I think it was fun. Not the salad. That's gross. Uh, okay. <laughs> Unless you're going to a party and you're trying to be cool for all your friends, in which case it's super cool to make jello salad. The problem is that it is made usually of gelatin, which is derived of the collagen um, taken from various animal body parts, like the skin and the hooves and, and so on. So unfortunately for those of you who are huge fans of gummy bears and other kind of gummy candies, um, uh, or marshmallows or chewing gum, uh, gelatin is in those things. And it is usually animal based and also some jellies and jams that are made with gelatin instead of pectin. Pectin would be um, a plant-based option uh, if you're making jam. So you can find some vegan jello that is made with agar agar, which is a seaweed product. And I use agar agar to thicken when I'm making homemade yogurt. Um, so you can use that instead of gelatin, but if you're buying jello or gelatin products where you see it in the ingredients, usually it is not plant-based. Usually that is an animal-based product. And that brings me to my non-vegan realization of the week, which is that planters dry roasted peanuts, I believe, have gelatin in them. Is that true? Am I lying to you? Uh, did I stick the planters peanuts in the wrong part? Hang on. I'm literally going to look it up while I'm talking to you. So I'm just to make sure that I'm not lying to you. But I'm pretty positive. Planters, it's because I just found out dry roasted peanuts. Ingredients. All right, ready? Um, now I can't, I can't find it. I saw it. I swear to you. I swear to you that I saw it. Okay, you know what we'll do? We'll do exactly what I would do if I wasn't with you. Planters, dry roasted peanuts, vegan, question mark. Ready? Vegan, question mark. But uh, buddy, they're not vegetarian. They contain ge gelatin. So there you go. Okay, so I wasn't wrong. I didn't need to take you down that rabbit hole with me, but I did. And um, I ate some. It wasn't a couple of days ago. I think it was like two weeks ago, maybe more. I made pad thai. We had planters dry roasted peanuts in the house. So I decided to use them for the pad thai and turns out my pad thai was not vegan. So I'm outing myself. Okay, so let's go back to the milk, milk stuff. Because remember earlier I was talking about how there's tons of um, milk products or byproducts in a bunch of stuff and you wouldn't even know, to know that. So because it doesn't necessarily say milk on, um, on the list of ingredients. And some of them do literally say milk products or dairy, but you would not have even looked at the ingredients because you would have assumed this product was vegan. So we'll start with the shocking fact that 
I mean, maybe you already thought, okay, well, these are cheese flavored um, Pringles, but, or sour cream and onion or um, nacho flavored Doritos or whatever. So maybe there's milk in here because cheese and you looked it up. Maybe you thought they're chips and they're flavored and it's not real. So there's no dairy in here and you would both be right. There are cheese flavored chips that are totally dairy free. And there are tons of chips, tons. There are chips that um, do have dairy in them and even some plain chips. I don't know why, but some brand, um, some brands of plain chips even have milk products in them. So that's weird. Uh, and I don't know what they use it for. I don't know if it's like the coating. I don't know what it is or how or why, uh, uh, but they do. So one ingredient that would um, maybe not be obvious to some people is casein. So casein, we talked about in the last episode of this podcast, when we were talking about the addictive qualities of cheese uh, in the episode called Life After Cheese. And um, even if a creamer is labeled non-dairy, it might still actually contain casein, which is a milk ingredient. And um, that is something to be mindful of. Soy cheese can sometimes contain casein in it, which is um, kind of pretty disappointing. But also just to get off of the casein for a second, there are um, soy cheeses and some soy milks, but I don't think it's often here in North America that actually have also milk, dairy milk products in them. So definitely check for that. If you have a soy cheese, just flip over, check the ingredients. Don't assume because it's a soy based cheese that it doesn't have casein in it. Um, it is lactose free, but it still contains milk protein in it. Um, and one of the reasons why actually some companies do that is just to, so that the cheese will still have that same melty. So it will still like melt because some vegan cheeses don't melt that great. Uh, so especially that if your soy cheese is super melty, definitely have a look at the ingredients, but always look just in case, if that's something that is concerning to you. Um, Go veggie has tons of vegan cheeses, but they also have lactose free cheese that is not vegan and the packaging looks really similar. So keep an eye out for that as well. I don't know if you've done that before, but I've grabbed stuff before. Like there'll be a shelf with say um, vegan feta cheeses or vegan, I don't know, whatever product, dairy product. And on the same shelf is um, the same, the non-vegan equivalent of that. And sometimes the packaging looks really similar, especially if it's the same company. So for example, I don't know, what was I buying the other day? Riviera yogurt for um, a meal prep Instagram live that I did with AGM health and fitness or Adelaide of AGM health and fitness. We did a meal prep, which we, we do every Sunday, except for this Easter Sunday that we do every Sunday lately um, at four o'clock Eastern time. And on the last one, we did breakfast meal prep and I didn't have time to make yogurt. So I bought Riviera yogurt. And when I went to the grocery store to get it, the first yogurt I bought, um, cause I was looking for plain, I grabbed and it was not actually plant-based. It was a dairy a dairy yogurt, but it was right next to the plant-based yogurt. And the, the pack, the packaging looks so similar that I almost just grabbed the wrong one. So, um, that's just, you know, something to be mindful of another ingredient that definitely implies that there is dairy is whey and whey is in breads. It's in, um, some sweet dessert type baked goods, um, it's in chocolate bars, it's in some candies, and what whey is, is a byproduct of cheese making. So once the milk curdles to become like the salt, the, the, the curdled part, the more solidified part becomes the actual cheese, but then the liquid that's um, strained off of it is the whey protein. And something that whey protein is really often in also is in nutritional supplements and in protein powders. So 
your protein powder might not say anywhere on the actual label that it's, it has dairy in it. Um, it might just say, I don't know what, chocolate protein shake. Um, and you don't see any obvious animal proteins in it, but it says whey, that is a milk ingredient. So not only to be avoided if you are vegan, but also definitely to be avoided if you are um, lactose intolerant. So, um, or allergic or um, opposed. <laughs> so um, milk is also in dark chocolate sometimes. That's one that I didn't realize at first. So I switched from milk chocolate to dark chocolate for the longest time, not even looking at the ingredients. And a few years ago, I can't remember what it was. It was like something in the chocolate that I was trying to put my finger up. Mm, this tastes like, I don't know what, say nutmeg or something. I flipped it over and I saw there was dairy in the chocolate. And I realized that I had been just naively and obliviously eating all kinds of dark chocolate with no idea whether or not it had um, dairy in it, because I just assumed that it didn't because it didn't say milk chocolate. That was kind of dumb of me now that I look back on it, but there you go. Not everyone knows. It's not always obvious. Um, for those of you who like to make your own yogurts or kefirs and you buy starters for that, um, like fermentation starters, they are often mostly not vegan, mostly come from milk bacteria products. Um, but you can buy the vegan ones and they will say right on it that it's vegan friendly or plant-based. So, um, but that's just something to be mindful of, even though it's not yogurt itself is the starter that starter comes from a milk product and margarine, which is weird because margarine you would think would just be oil or like plant-based oil, vegetable oils or coconut oils or olive oil. Um, but margarine sometimes has milk ingredients in it also. So check for that. And then the weirdest thing I've seen in margarine to me, again, just one of those things I never would have expected was fish oil. So weird. I can't remember what brand it was. And it was a long time ago that I saw this, but I was checking because I was looking for earth balance, which is my favorite. Um, if you're going to eat margarine, not the healthiest, but if you are going to eat any kind of margarine or vegan butter, uh, my favorite is earth balance. I put a little bit on popcorn sometimes and I use it uh, for baking sometimes. And um, this grocery store I was in didn't have any. So I went to the regular margarine area and started just checking to see the ingredients, um, not even looking to see if they were vegan or not vegan, because it I assumed like vegetable shortening oil, whatever margarine, but I can't remember what I was looking for. Um, I guess to see which kinds of oils were in them, but assuming they were plant-based and I saw fish oil and I thought that was very weird. Very, very, very weird. So there's that. Make sure your margarine's not made of fish, guys. Another ingredient, it's not a milk ingredient, but another ingredient that is not vegan friendly uh, is not something you would normally look for, but when you see it, it's probably pretty obvious that it's an animal product, but that's bone meal, which is exactly what it sounds like it is. It's crushed or ground animal bones. It's in some fertilizers. It's, it's sold as a fertilizer at Home Depot, but it's also in some vitamins and supplements and as a source of calcium. It's in some toothpastes um, and some alternatives to that would be uh, in your garden would be using um, like a vegetable compost or mulch um, using clay. And then of course, with your vitamins, as we talked about earlier, just making sure that they're actually vegan. Other places that are not obvious that you might find animal products are, oh, great. We're going to have another pronunciation issue in a second. Uh, we're ready for this. Uh, <laughs> there are a bunch of sauces. Sometimes just always check your sauces. Uh, cause even if it says, um, I don't know, pesto sauce, you might assume that it's basil and oil, but 
pesto sauce usually often also has Parmesan or Romano cheese in it. So check that. Pad Thai sauce often has fish, fish sauces in it. Barbecue sauce can have either fish sauce or honey um, or sugar, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and then here, here comes, ready? Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, no, okay, whatever. Sauce traditionally is made with anchovies or fish sauce, uh, but there is a vegan brand a vegan version of it, of that sauce that I just said very badly. Can anyone say it properly? Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. Did I do it? No one's here to validate me. I feel very, very alone. Did I say it right? Anyone? Hello? Um, I have a vegan one in the fridge. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And uh, it tastes the same. It's tasty. It's great. Uh, and there you go. Okay, you know how I just said that there was fish um, oil in that margarine that I found one day at the grocery store? Um, Tropicana Heart Healthy Orange Juice has fish oil in it and gelatin. Minute Maid juices are fortified with vitamin B3, which we talked about is from lanolin, which is from the oil in a sheep's wool. And many varieties of fruit juices, which I already mentioned, contain uh, carmine, which is that red beetle crushed up, red insect. The little cute, colorful, adorable sprinkles that you see on cupcakes and cookies are often not vegan friendly. Um, as well as confectioner's shellac. Why? Um, I wrote it down. Hang on. Uh, oh, it's made from insects <laughs> and possibly non vegan trace um, ingredients as well, like white sugar, uh, the red food dye, which we talked about again, the insects, uh, dairy, and sometimes gelatin. So um, I keep saying sugar, and we're going to get to that in a second. It's, it's almost next. There's just one more thing before that. Actually, there's two more things. You know what I was saying before that there's like products that you might assume are um, vegan or vegan friendly that, that you should not make these assumptions about. Again, from experience, I have bought veggie burgers before that have egg in them. Brands like Corn and Morningstar Farms use egg whites um, in theirs, and some uh, companies also put cheese in their veggie burgers. So even if it doesn't say that on the front, um, do look at the ingredients. So any kind of faux meats, basically any deli slices or veggie burgers or sausages, hot dogs, that kind of thing, um, definitely have a look for that. And then more and more, companies who are sort of jumping on the um on the plant-based bandwagon are are putting out meats that are half animal based and half plant-based so pay attention to that too so if you see like plant-based across the front it doesn't mean it's completely plant-based again look at the ingredients look closer make sure um, that that's actually what you're what you're buying and then the other thing is artificial and natural flavoring can contain um, milk products and then some of the other ingredients that I mentioned earlier, like the carmine for coloring, um, of course, sugar, which we're about to talk about in a second, uh, and um, uh, yeah, so those are things that you should definitely uh, keep an eye out for. Of course, if you just see artificial flavoring or artificial color, or even natural flavor, it doesn't, that doesn't really tell you if it's vegan friendly or not. So it's up to you whether you're gonna eat that anyways or not, um, but just at least be making the informed choice that you are eating something that you might not actually know what is inside it. To be fair, if it says artificial, you also don't probably know what chemicals are in there. And you know, so you've just decided to splurge and eat something that you're living dangerously. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> you're going all out okay so here's the thing i said something earlier about how it's not always in the um actual ingredients the animal derived product for anyone who's not watching me on a video right now on youtube you just need to know that i have like the most interesting hair going on uh i'm not sure what's happening but it's large my hair is large today um okay so why am i talking about my hair i don't know i caught a glimpse of myself in the camera so oh yeah okay so the other thing is i'm derailed you know what the problem is the problem is not only can i see my crazy hair being reflected back at me but i can there's also a window right above where i can see the sun is just shining and the sky is so blue and it's just i'm just so happy that it's finally beautiful outside it's been gray and wet and chilly for days so i'm getting like you know i'm, I'm getting that spring buzz that my animals are probably you know, pacing around upstairs going, when is she going to take us out? It's finally beautiful. And I am going to take them out uh, soon, guys. But in the meantime, not obvious. I'm just rambling today. I'm blaming the spring and my crazy hair. Processing, that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, so it's not always an ingredient that has the animal or insect product in it. Sometimes it's something in the processing. So as an example, in some countries, including here in North America, white cane sugar is filtered using bone char. And bone char comes from bones. That is right. Good. A plus for everyone who yelled bones. So um, that is one example. Uh, yeah. Not all sugar is vegan. You might have heard that before. Maybe you didn't know why. Now I'm telling you. It's because it is filtered using bone char a lot of the time. The other process, there's probably a, a bunch. Like we could probably talk for hours about the different processes and, you know, um, ingestible products that go through these processes. But something that stands out for me very much is that um alcohol can be not vegan and i will be totally honest with you i was a vegetarian for 22 years before i found out that alcohol could be not vegetarian friendly or not vegan friendly and um i was shocked and now you'll see on certain bottles of wine or certain alcohols, you'll actually see that they've like wrote vegan with a cute little leaf on it so that you know that the wine that you're drinking is actually vegan friendly. It's not always. So uh, we'll get that to that in a sec, but, um, but sometimes it's just right on the label for you. The work is done. You don't even have to look it up. <clears throat> they don't always label it. There are ways to find out, but um, yes, some brewmasters, winemakers and distillers, uh, include actual animal ingredients in their products directly. So especially like cream liqueurs, for example, has literally has cream in it. Uh, some of them have honey in them. And there's even a cock ale from the 17th century that some breweries will recreate from time to time to be, uh, you know, whimsical, um, that literally contains an entire chicken. Ew. So there's that. So there's the alcohols that literally contain the ingredients in them themselves. Um, and again, not always obvious. So, you know, it's, it's not just because it doesn't say cream on it, that it's not obvious. I'm trying to think there's a beer. I won't remember it right now. If I remember, I'll throw up a story on, um, on Instagram or something and tell you what it is. Cause I had a beer, I think it was last summer that I thought was amazing. And um, it wasn't vegan. I feel like it was called something to do with a sheep, which you would obviously not assume that there's sheep in it, which there isn't, but there was milk. There was milk ingredients in it. Anyway, um, the other thing is, even if it doesn't have literally animal ingredients inside the beverage, um 
there are animal products that are used in the filtration of of these um, wines, beers, and um, alcohols. Yes. Okay. So there's isinglass, which is um, from fish bladders. There's gelatin, which we talked about earlier, which is derived of um, animal bones and skin and horn and hoofs and tissues and things. Um, there is, um, oh, pronunciation day. <laughs> Chitin, 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 whatever it is. It is the byproduct of um, insects or shellfish or seashells, albumin, which is egg whites, and casein, which we talked about, which is from cow um, milk. And uh, this is used for fining. So how do you know? How do you know that your alcohol is vegan friendly? Well, first, as I said before, some of them literally just say vegan on them. So that's extremely helpful. Um, and, and also, you know, how I said before, some of it's obvious, like a cream liqueur, you can pretty much assume has cream in it, but that's not always the case either. So just telling you, like, I think, no, I know, I know that Bailey's makes an almond based liqueur now. So you can actually get vegan Bailey's, which is fun if you like it. And there's, um, Pellini makes a cream limoncello. It says vegan right on the bottle or it does in Italy, but I don't know here if you can even get it. Well, here, who knows where you are? You could be in Italy right now. Um, uh, Alia makes a vegan coffee cream liqueur and possibly some others uh, that's really tasty. So there are cream liqueurs that are plant-based that are vegan. So as much as you can't assume that a cream liqueur is vegan. Don't assume that it's not, find out. And one of my favorite ways to find out um, about alcohols that are not labeled vegan friendly is to go on barnivore.com. And I'll stick that link in the show notes. It is super helpful. Of course, they don't have every single possible wine, beer, cider, spirit, listed, but I'm telling you, they have tons. They have tons. It's really rare that I've looked something up on their website and not found the answer I was looking for. And then the other thing you can do, which I have done is you can literally just message the company. You can message the vineyard, you can email the vineyard, you can, or the brewery or who, you know, the distillery directly. And I have done that a handful of times. And every single time they have answered me, whether they were vegan friendly or not. They told me, um, and there was one company, I can't remember what it was, but they weren't familiar with it. They didn't, they, they wrote back and said, I, well, we don't have animal products in our beer, so I can't see why it wouldn't be vegan friendly. And I explained that in the processing, you know, these certain ingredients are used for these different processes. And they looked into it for me and they got back to me and told me that they did not use any animal products and in fact, they told me what they did use, which is kind of fun. Uh, so I learned a bit about them and um, promoted them quite heavily because I really appreciated that. They really took the time to go and, and look into it. They didn't just say, yeah, yeah, it's vegan. There's nothing animal in it, which some people will tell you. But I've also been to a restaurant before and asked for something vegetarian and then been eating it and been like, mm, and then clarified with the server who said, yes, it's vegan. It just has chicken broth in it. So, um, someone just says, yeah, yeah, it's a vegan. <laughs> and you really want more reassurance to ask for details. You can get those details. Like I said, we could talk about this probably for a good three hours. If we wanted to cover every single ingredient and every single process, that um, has any kind of animal ingredient or contact. But I think that's pretty much the basics. Like I, th I think I've given you most of the stuff that you would commonly find in the grocery store or the liquor store. And um, there's a whole other world. We'll do an episode one day about like even your clothes because it is surprising. It's surprising where animal products are hiding whether it's 
in your books, your clothing, your food, your drinks, like it, it there, it's everywhere. It's amazing to me how we have found a way to use animal products in so many different aspects of life and so many products. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we covered the basics today. So basically it just comes down to reading the ingredients. And as I tell my nutrition clients, not, not just about animal based stuff, but just about determining whether or not the ingredients you're eating are, are actually healthy. Um, read the ingredients. And if you don't know exactly what that ingredient is, look it up and find out because um, just seeing a word that's not familiar to you doesn't mean that it's not an animal product or a chemical or a preservative or a chemical preservative or whatever it is you're trying to avoid. So my tips for you are to always read the ingredients, always look up any ingredients that you don't recognize. Go on barnivore.com if you want to know if your alcohol is vegan or not. Um, go to the show notes and check out the downloadable PDF um, that is really detailed about all the places that um, milk ingredients and dairy products hide and the different words that are used um, you know, ingredient names that are, that are less obvious than just milk products. Um, check out in the show notes, the link to the blog post, uh, giving you plant-based omega threes and supplements. And in the show notes, the link to the blog post about, um, non-vegan friendly ingredients that you will find in your medications um, and vitamins and supplements. My other advice to you is to get outside and get some vegan friendly vitamin D straight from the source. If it is as beautiful where you are right now as it is where I am, that's where you need to be outside. And um, if there is anything, if you have any questions or concerns or comments or suggestions or requests, or you want to send me a picture of your breakfast, if you would like to know if plant-based coaching or holistic nutrition is right for you, and you would like to take me up on a free 20 minute consultation by telephone or via zoom, just please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can go to sweetvegan.net and use the contact link. You can reach out to me on um, Instagram. I am at underscore sweet vegan underscore sweet vegan even has a Facebook page. You can go there too and follow or like or do whatever Facebook does. Um, but whatever you do, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Do not hesitate to reach out. And um, yeah, have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Bye.